If you're deep in the Apple ecosystem and you want to build out a secure, privacy-focused smart home, HomeKit is a great way to tie it all together. So in this video, I'll explain everything you need to know if you're just starting out with HomeKit. Now, to be clear, HomeKit and Apple Home are often used interchangeably, but they're not actually the same thing. Apple Home is an app the interface you use to manage and control all of your smart devices. HomeKit is basically the underlying technology that allows all those devices to communicate with Apple Home, and it's what makes them discoverable inside the app. If you're familiar with Amazon's platform, Apple Home is comparable to the Alexa app, and HomeKit you can almost think of as Alexa skills. Well, almost. So with that out of the way, let's start with the Home app, which comes pre-installed on every iPhone, iPad, and Mac. And this is all you really need to get started. Once you've opened the app, you can add a HomeKit compatible device, which is any smart device with the HomeKit or Apple Home badge on it. Simply choose add device and it will ask you to scan the QR code. The code is usually found on the product itself or somewhere inside the product packaging. After that, your device should be visible inside the Home app dashboard and you should be able to control it directly using this widget, which by the way, controls locally, not over the internet, unlike most other smart home platforms. The only exception is if you're using Siri for voice control. You can also customize this dashboard to some degree, such as grouping devices by room, changing the order and size of your widgets, and even throwing on a custom wallpaper. There's also the ability to use scenes, which allow you to control multiple devices with a single action. But that's really all there is to it. That's a basic setup of the Home app with HomeKit. However, in this scenario, there's no hub being used, and there are some big limitations that come with that, such as not being able to control devices remotely when you're away from home, not being able to create or run automations, and not being able to share access to your home app. So let's talk about adding a hub to the mix because this is what gives you the full HomeKit experience. And when I say hub, I specifically mean a HomeKit hub, which includes HomePods, HomePod minis, and Apple TVs. So if you already own one of these devices, then you already have a HomeKit hub. And if you don't, you will need to go out and buy one of these to get the most out of HomeKit. And I'll talk more about what that means in a moment. A HomePod is a good choice if you tend to use voice commands because this will give you a fixed access point to Siri. An Apple TV is a good choice if you want notifications and device control directly from your TV. It can also be wired into your router using ethernet so it tends to be a bit more reliable. Either way, once you have your HomeKit hub and you've gone through the initial setup process, you should see it listed in your Home app. The good news is there's nothing else you need to do here. Apple will automatically configure and assign it as your HomeKit hub. And if you have multiple HomePods or Apple TVs, it will assign one of those as your HomeKit hub while seamlessly switching between them as needed. It does this to maintain the best possible connection to both your network and your smart devices. So having more than one HomeKit hub is generally better for coverage and stability, but it's certainly not required. Now, as I said, adding a HomeKit hub is important because it unlocks some essential features inside the Home app. The first being remote access, which allows you to control devices when you're away from home. Your hub makes this possible because it maintains a permanent connection to your devices. So anything you do in the home app gets sent to your HomeKit hub over the internet and then your hub carries out that action locally. It also keeps tabs on the current state of your devices so you can always see a real-time overview of everything in your home. Next is automations, allowing you to trigger devices and scenes based on specific conditions. Things like motion detection, temperature changes, time of day, and many more. This is arguably the true definition of a smart home since you don't have to rely on pressing buttons or using your voice. Again, your HomeKit hub is necessary here because it's always on, always connected, allowing it to run automations uninterrupted. It also coordinates between multiple devices when using more complex automations. Another key feature is shared access, which allows you to invite other people into your Apple home. This allows them to see and control devices themselves, and it's more or less a requirement if you live with a partner or spouse. You can also grant limited guest access for things like friends and extended family. And this is all made possible by the hub because it keeps everything synchronized across all accounts and everyone can see what's 
happening in real time. Next is HomeKit Secure Video, which encrypts and stores your camera footage in the cloud. You will need a premium iCloud subscription for this feature, but thankfully it doesn't eat into your storage allowance. Finally, the hub itself has a thread radio built in, which means on top of Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, you will be able to add thread devices using HomeKit. This is a newer smart home protocol, but we are starting to see a lot more thread devices nowadays, and they offer some great improvements over Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Check out my protocols video on screen now if you want to learn more about that. On a similar note, a HomeKit hub also supports Matter devices, but I'll talk more about that in a moment. Now, let's talk more about actual HomeKit devices. Of course, you have access to all the usual device types, including bulbs, cameras, sensors, locks, thermostats, and even things like humidifiers, fans, and aircon units. Apple doesn't make these devices themselves, but as long as you see Apple Home or HomeKit on the box, you know it's going to be compatible. As before, you simply scan the product QR code and the device will appear inside your home app. However, it's not always going to be that simple because some devices require a proprietary hub or bridge and it's that hub or bridge that connects through HomeKit. A good example of this is Philips Hue because you don't add Philips Hue bulbs directly to HomeKit Instead, you connect them to the Hue bridge and it's that bridge that gets added to the home app. What's more, this process often involves using the manufacturer's app to set everything up for the first time. And you may need to return to this app later on to access certain features that just aren't available through HomeKit and sometimes to download a software update. Ultimately, the home app will be the control center for all of your HomeKit devices but a device will occasionally force you to go outside of that. Now, with all of that said, what about devices that aren't directly HomeKit supported? Because there are still plenty of smart products out there that don't have the HomeKit badge. The good news is you do have some options. First of all, Apple supports the new Matter standard. So if you see this logo on the box, it still comes with a QR code and it can still be added to your home app as long as you have a HomeKit hub. Secondly, if the device is neither HomeKit or Matter supported, you can often make it work using a virtual bridge such as HomeBridge. HomeBridge is a free open source platform that allows you to connect a wide range of otherwise unsupported HomeKit devices to the Home app. This one is beyond the scope of a beginner's guide, but just know the option is there if you ever need it. Okay, I think that's a good place to leave it, but check out my video on smart home protocols. It breaks down the different technologies used in smart devices, and it will help you make better buying decisions as you grow with HomeKit. Otherwise, drop any HomeKit questions you have below and I'll be happy to help. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.